Hello, I'm Ben Goldsmith and welcome to Fintech Monthly, your update of the biggest stories from Fintech from London and around the world. Apple's new payment service rolled out across America last week, but in a shock move, both Walmart and Best Buy decided not to support it. Over 15 retailers are working together to create their own standard called Currency, a payment app that will compete head-to-head -head with Apple Pay. Currency is expected to roll out in 2015 and relies on the arguably arcane technology of QR codes. This will certainly be one to keep your eye on. Mastercard stuck a finger up at Apple last week with the unveiling of the world's first biometrics payments card. In partnership with startup Zwipe, the new system uses fingerprint and contactless technology instead of traditional chip and pin. This is my payment card and this is my pin code. I place it here and I swipe. Look out for the first cards hit in the UK in 2015. Sheffield-based startup Freeze have raised $3.2 million to help them take on traditional current accounts. The startup offers online-only accounts that range from free to £10 per month. The service, which comes with a debit card, sidesteps the usual credit checks, so it's open to anyone. Freeze don't provide overdrafts, so there's no chance of running up debt on their platform. Every month we'll be chatting to Richard Gould of Rag Co to get his insights on the biggest stories in fintech. This month he's been telling us about the most interesting trends that he's seen. The way in which we look at fintech, and this is really driven by those investors that we work for, the companies that we work with, are around five areas. The biggest, the most legacy of the fintech areas is around enterprise software, so B2B software being sold into financial institutions generally. And then the four more emerging technology areas are well, first of all, alternative finance, so the, the whole lending regime. Secondly, payments. Thirdly, personal wealth management. And lastly, and personally most exciting to me, and I think we'll see a lot about this in the next 12 months, is blockchain technologies and Bitcoin specifically. As Richard explained, some of the biggest companies in fintech work directly with the banks instead of serving consumers. Each month, we'll feature one of these companies and they'll explain exactly what they do. First up, Digital Shadows. At Digital Shadows, we run a cyber monitoring service that secures companies' digital footprints. So we look at all the information that companies expose online, and we find things that could undermine their security or reputation in some way. So in the old world, companies kept all their data in the centre of a network and built walls around the edge. Today's world, we have social media, we've got mobile, there's the cloud, and even the Internet of Things coming along quickly. So suddenly, there's a lot more risk outside the boundary that we monitor for and help companies keep secure. This summer, Tech City News headed to New York to see what it had to offer. Whilst we were over there, I chatted to John Zanoff, founder of the FinTech Startups Meetup, and I asked him what the big difference was between a West Coast and an East Coast founder. Without a doubt, there, there's a strong East Coast versus West Coast, Silicon Alley, Silicon Valley rivalry brewing. If I was to characterize the New York startup scene and New York in general, we all have a chip on our shoulders and that chip is gonna figure out how to get anything done. So I think the, you know, the gritty, scrappy founder in New York is sort of a whole new breed and it's exciting, you know. Now con contrast that with, I think, on, on the West Coast where at a very, call it early age, um, founders think they can tackle any problem. Check out techcitynews.com for more of our coverage from New York. And finally, the market for global payments is really hotting up, with three startups vying for top spot. WeSwap, who this week raised $7.5 million, charged just 1% of each transfer, while more established competitors TransferWise charge 0.5% and TransferGo take a flat fee of £2.50 per transaction under £5,000. All three allow users to sidestep hefty bank fees, but the jury's out as to who will win this basement battle. Thanks for watching and keep your eye on what we're doing by following us on Twitter at Fintech Monthly.